look at this fish. So I'm gonna get this guy right back in the water. The alarm clock sounded early on an otherwise quiet June morning, but I hadn't slept a wink. My mind was buzzing with anticipation of a trophy striped bass trip out of Boston Harbor with Captain Brian Coombs of Get Tight Sport Fishing. While the city slept in, we geared up, grabbed copies, and took to the water. As night began to give way to dawn, we rounded the bend at Deer Island and headed straight toward the rising sun, searching for signs of striped bass. It's really the last stronghold of the big bass. Everyone talks Block Island, Block Island, Block Island, Boston Harbor. And this really is a hidden gem secret. But the big thing is really to be able to make sure we're handling them correctly when we're putting them back. A bass over 40 inches has about a 50% mortality rate. Yeah. Uh, you don't the, swim it properly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we, we want to make sure we get as much oxygen into these fish before we release them. We want to make sure when we're handling them on deck, we're not gonna drop them. This is this is my eyes. Yeah, right. Right here. I do I do 90% of my fishing now out here out of my side imaging. And as far as the side imaging at what speed do you feel that you can still adequately run at and still pick these fish up? Right Except now we're at five. We're, we're, we're perfect. Yeah. We have great conditions. If it starts getting a little choppy, uh, if you get a lot of boat wakes, you start getting You gotta pull it back a yeah. little bit. I'm just approaching here. And you start seeing them rise. And I start to see them rise, so I'm a little bit behind. Right now, the gull behind us, he sees something. He sees something. That gull saw, saw one rise up right here, so we're just gonna come back here for a second, okay? Okay, right, right where I sent you? Exactly. All right, coming in. Right where those big beans were yesterday. Why were you saying yeah. inside? Wait for them to come up. They'll come up. It was going that way. It was going off our port side. Hold the cast until you see him. Just blind cast for now, just to see if we, because right. it's probably a big school. Wait. That porpoise is right in front of us. Yeah, up tight. Just on the drop, right? They're right, they're right behind us, big, big pod. Big fish, big fish, he's coming fast. I'm out of your way. Go cast off the back, Chris. I just got a whack, right there. That hit it on the drop, huh? I uh, don't know, as soon as I started moving it, they hit thick. There's a couple hundred fish around us, Chris. Do we? Tell me if you need a hand. Net, 36 inches, maybe it's maybe bigger. Nice one, nice one. 38, 39 inch fish on the Al Gags. You tell me when you're ready, yep, Cap. Ready. Oh, wow, first fish, first cast. So this is a small fish for out here. <laughs> Guys, one of the things that he'd make sure we're gonna do today is we're gonna take care of these fish. This fish is over the size at 35 inches. It's over it, so. So really important. Anytime you get these fish in, try, try, try to support the belly. 
Um, try to not get a lot of time out of the water with these fish. He's probably close to 40 inches. We Look got at him. the size of the head. You were talking about this this stock here. Thick tail, big head. Yeah. Beautiful Let fish. Get him back in the water. Uh, grab me the red gripper right there. Yep, you got it. We're gonna uh, we're gonna vent this fish out. Put us in gear, Chris. Yeah, you got it. So what we're doing, we're just getting oxygen over his gills right now. We're gonna swim them. And really all you need to do is just put it into gear. You don't need to be going crazy. Yeah. You don't want to run these yeah. things. You don't want to drag them to death. You just want to just get some oxygen. You kind of want to make sure they're right it upright. So their mouth opens up, swim them side to side, just like this. Their pectoral fins will shoot out to the side when they're starting to have good oxygen. I fought him quick, heavy drag. Um, Chris, neutral. Uh, I fought him heavy drag, so he's, he's in good condition already. Um, we didn't keep him out of the water long. He's kicking good already. Usually as long as the fight is, is how long you, you have to do CPR. He's ready to go. Kind of left fish right there to come over. But this is the zone. I'm, I'm happy. We're in them now, Chris. It's starting to work. So, guys, right there, you can tell that Brian works with a lot of captains. One of the tandem captains, one of the guys that works with him, called him in on a fish. We came, made a quick run in. Brian made a cast, literally started moving the jig. Okay, I just put the first fish in the boat right here. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to get repositioned now. Oh, no, no. Blow ups right there. Blow ups right off Scotty's bow. Yeah, I see it. All right, Chris, at our 11 o'clock right now, 150, 200 feet. All right, you're going to be in them in a second. Right where that bird is. See where I the see bird it. is? Up ahead. See him. 150. See it right see ahead. It. I can reach them. All right, right beside the boat. Right beside where? the boat. Oh, yeah, right here. They're all through here. They're in front of us, too. All right, get the cast in front. I'll get the cast. Yeah, behind. you got it. I'm right over the top of them. Look at this. That was a little smaller fish right there, but look at this fish right here. It's literally right here. Cast placement's going to be really key. Yep. I'm going on these right here. Tight. Nice. Cookie cutter fish of the last one. It's 36. On the Al Gags whip it tail. Alright, when I get him back in the water, we're gonna get another fish real quick. He's a little smaller. Look at the side imaging. Take a picture of the imaging. Right here, right here. Cast right right at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, right there. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. You just drop it back? Yeah. You see that? I did. He followed, he turned on it. <laughs> They're all around us right now. It's crazy, but this is really like fishing almost bluefin. You want to land it next to him and on the, top no, of it? Right, right here, right here. They're so aggressive too, Chris. And pretty steady retrieve. Yeah, Just yeah. A little slower along. than that. A little slower than that. They start really frothing. We're gonna throw the dock, but the plastics have been out fishing the dock lately. So, oh, right to the right, to the right, right here, blowing up to the right. Yep. Sam, how far out? 150. Oh 100 yeah. Okay. Feet. Okay. Right there. Put it in them, Chris. Straight ahead. Tight. That's a nice one. Yep. 
This is a uh, Shimano grappler. Uh, it's a popping style rod. Uh, great for throwing these really big plastics. These heavy plastics, great for throwing docks. Tight, tight, set it, set on them, Chris. That's a real one. <laughs> Don't adjust the drag. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch it. Don't adjust the drag. So what I did there is I, I was retrieving, letting it drop a little bit, retrieving, letting it drop a little bit, just changing up that. Oh, oh monster. Oh, man. This is a 45, 46 inch fish. Look at this fish just rolled on the surface. So big fish will usually come to the surface like that. They come up and they take a peek. This guy just ripped off drag. I have not touched a drag. I let Brian set that drag. And I was probably a little bit too psyched. I was ripping the line through. I got him. This guy is leaving a weight. Really important with these big fish. Support their girth as you're bringing them aboard. That's what you come up to Boston Harbor for. <laughs> Look at that. Let's get this guy back in the water. Vent it out. Right. Usually I would troll this fish to vent them, but Chris is tight off the bow. I just kind of walked him over to this side where we have the sun. <laughs> Look at this girl, huh? Head up, head up, head up. Not She's bigger. Yet. That's 40 pound class fish. <laughs> All right, he's gonna walk right into you now. Uh, Mid 30s, maybe, maybe bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, huh? We haven't been casting but six, seven casts out here. The cap's already got three of them. I was ripping it through there, and he made the suggestion of slowing things down. He certainly did that. Look at this Take fish. Him. Let me get on this him side. Bigger fish. Look at that fish. Oh, Look at this fish. So I'm going to get this guy right back in the water. Gorgeous fish. I would say this is probably in the high 30s. Yeah, high 30s. They always look a little bigger in the water. That is a absolute beautiful And we'll vent him, Chris. You got him by the face? I do, I got him by the face. Look at this cap, huh? All right, release her, slap her on the head. Oh, that's awesome. Millions of people live in the greater Boston area, and thousands more regularly commute in and out of the city, but the world-class fishing available in Boston Harbor is largely overlooked. Efforts to clean up the harbor have brought back bait and game fish and greatly improved the fishing since the dark days of the 70s and 80s. The harbor is home to 34 islands that make up the Boston Harbor Islands National and State Park which provides recreational opportunities, including campgrounds, shore fishing sites, and mooring fields. The islands also provide miles of structure and habitat for the striped bass and prey. Stretching north from Deer Island are the communities that make up the North Shore of Massachusetts, from the sandy beaches of Winthrop and Revere to the rocky coastlines of Nahant and Swampscott. Large tides bring in cold water from the Gulf of Maine helping to maintain an abundance of bait that attracts game fish species, including flounder, bluefish, bluefin tuna, and of course, the striped bass. With all these areas and short ride from Winthrop, Captain Brian Coombs has access to a wide range of options for anglers looking to charter a fishing trip with him. These fish yeah. live, live out in this outer zone and push in only on the bait. They never actually come into the harbor. Very rarely, um, they're very similar in genetic wise to the fish we see out on Stellwagen if you're tuna fishing. Big heads, much thicker tails, broader bodies. You know, when, when you get a 50 pound fish out there, you know, they're, they're thick, they're muscular, they're big, big broom tails. When you get a 50 pound fish in shore, they're like a, they're like a big fat cow. You know, much you know, like girthy, fattier, you know, generally a little shorter. The fish that we see out here are usually a little longer. So like, let, let's say a 50 inch fish out inshore could be 50 inches because he has the poundage. A 50 inch fish out there is like 52, 53 inches. They're, they're slightly longer 
Yeah. Just based on how far they're traveling. Based yeah. On the, the, yeah. The yeah. 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 They're, 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 they're chasing herring and yeah. they're chasing and they're chasing bunker right. and they're chasing mackerel. You know. Unt until you see big fish like that and kind of that run gun, almost like yeah. that tuna. Yeah. Running gun and that it was a little bit more frantic than it usually is today, <laughs> just because it's a Saturday. Yeah. And, uh, and I can tell that that it's like you want to get your fish in early because there's going to be a hundred boats on top of you shortly. I just saw a fish break out here. Right here, right here. One o'clock. One yep. o'clock. Tight on fly. On the fly. That's got to be so cool. Right, we were doing that last year. Our biggest was 49 inches on fly. <laughs> They're still behind us, Cash. That's what I just did. I'm on your left, so. All right. It's tight. Rory's tight. He's doing better than us today. <laughs> yeah. A little bit bigger than what we're getting down the Cape. Nice fish. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Tight. Tight. Nice. Set the hook on him. Set him. Brian explained this to me earlier about a run and gun. <laughs> These fish are moving fast, chasing fast baits. And we got a fleet of 100 boats today, so, it, you know, we're really trying to stay ahead of the pack. What Brian did, he made a quick move there. They were off our bow using the side imaging. He saw that they were right off the stern, and we both made a blind cast off the back. Look at all the fish underneath Look us. Look at that. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So these are the new Shimano grappler rods. I like how light they are. They're, they're light, they have plenty of background. I actually, on this particular setup with the Twin Power 5K, 50 pound braid, I've actually landed mallin up to 250 pounds on this setup. And, and what line do you use? Uh, this is the Max Quattro okay. uh, from Power Pro. So it has the diameter of like 30, you know, braid. So you're getting the casting distance with all the backbone and power. Look at this fish just turned right there at the boat. And that, and that Twin Power 5K can put out like 50, 47 pounds of drag. Isn't that crazy? It's funny how each of these fish will react a little bit differently. The first one came up to the surface, way out there and took a peek, and then this guy wanted to go down. All right, I'm gonna bring him straight to you, Cap. All right. I'm gonna walk him right in now. Walk him in, walk him in. Oh. Oh. 48 inches. All right. Oh. oh, he's a much bigger fish. That's a that's a 40 pound class. Look at the size of this fish. Oh jeez. We're in? Yeah, in gear. What do you think? That's over 40 pounds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 40, like 44. 42, that's my guess. Biting down on the handle fashion. Yeah, that's what my last one did. I couldn't get him off the thumb. <laughs> yeah. Anyone can catch a big fish on bait. Doing it on a soft plastic or on a, or on a popper is another thing. No, this to me is so much more fun. So with all the new regulations now, um, uh, everyone's going to be having to use circle hooks uh, on all their live bait. And using circle hooks and pogies can be really tough to get the proper hook set. We're going to bridle this bait, very similar to what everyone does offshore for tuna. First, you need a rigging needle, just like that, and a bag of elastics, all right? You can get three rigging needles and a bag of elastics for 10 bucks. You'll be all set for the season at that point. You want to take the rigging needle, thread it onto the elastic, just like this, okay? Pinch it like that. Then what you want to do is take your hook, place it onto the elastic, all right? 
So now it is like that. Then what I do is I cup the whole thing in my hand. So it's just like this, okay? Come back to the live well. Scoop up a bunker. You want to go through the eye, but the soft part of the eye. You don't want to go straight through the eye. You find the groove in there. Push it straight through, okay? Pull the whole rigging needle through, out the other side. Then bring the elastic back over the hook point. Pop it off just like that, all right? You have the elastic just like that. Three wraps, and then back under the initial elastic right there, okay? Make sure your hook point is pointed up. Fix it so it's mid-hook. And right there, you have total exposure on your hook, okay? You get a much better hookup ratio on your big baits like that. So we're going to bump troll this guy. I'm going to put him back about 100, 150 feet. Sending her down. And so what we're doing right now, guys, is we're covering water. We're going to, we know that they're in here somewhere by doing this. He's got it back 150, 200 feet. He's going to cover water. If that goes off, it's going to tell us two things. A, we know the fish are here, and B, we know where they are at. Oh, that's a good one, Chris. Now this was on the live po pogey we bridled on the circle hook. So this is about a, you know, this is a 40 inch class fish. You know, I, he hit it really hard. Look at that, that circle comes right out. Just like that. Perfect. No damage to the fish. Beautiful fish. I'm going to get her back in the water while she's nice and green. I'm going to go ahead and bump you into gear. Let me secure this. A little push down. <laughs> right here, brother. A little assistance. <laughs> Brian, that's awesome. With the bite dying down and having already landed some trophy-sized stripers, we steam back towards Winthrop. Schoolies, bait fishing birds greeted us in the harbor along with a fleet of vessels enjoying the fishing right under the city skyline. We caught a few quick stripers before heading back to shore and were invited by Brian to visit his family's restaurant, Nappies a staple in his hometown of Medford. Known for having the best homestyle Italian food in the region, we were kindly greeted with a delicious meal, friendly smiles, and perhaps one of the best endings to an exciting day of fishing filming on the water's angling adventures.